Hey, 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 everybody, it is I Hope Giselle, and today I wanna come and talk about this Nikita Dragon situation. Now, a lot of you all have been asking me how I feel about it and exactly what my thoughts are about it, and I usually tend to wanna keep my mouth closed these days until I know a little bit more about things. Some of you all have heard my preliminary thoughts, but today I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts raw, real, and uncut. Now, a lot of you aren't gonna like what I have to say, but I think that what I have to say is still valid in a lot of spaces because these are things that folks are not taking into consideration. Y'all like me, y'all love me, y'all follow me because I keep it real. And a lot of you all have been tagging me in this situation and wanting me to talk about it because y'all know that Hope Giselle is not gonna sugarcoat it no matter who it is on the other end of the situation, including, but not limited to, myself. So, let's break down this Nikita Dragon situation. Nikita was arrested on Monday for disorderly conduct and all of the things that Nikita is usually known for doing, right? But we can't get into all of the rigmarole about whether or not it was right or wrong until we get into the rigmarole about what exactly happened. So Nikita was in my hometown, my city, Miami. And if you all have forgotten, Miami is still a part of Florida. Florida is a very red, Florida is a very transphobic, Florida is a very anti-gay, queer, anything up in that anti-woke state, right? So much so that they actually have this law that is talking about the anti-woke that is not a real law, right? But it is something that they want to enact. It's something that's on the table. It is something that they're talking about. And for those of you all who do not understand legislation and how legislation is happening, this is a real thing. There are real people that are talking about a law or a bill that says, literally, it's listed as the anti-woke bill, right? Don't believe me? Go look it up. And all this does is really enforce a space where people are not allowed to have free thought, free speech, or um, tone police the way that other folks get a chance to discriminate against them, especially folks within minority spaces and communities, but with a large focus and gaze upon the LGBTQIA plus community with an even larger scope and focus in on trans people with an even scopier scope on trans women, right? So if you did not know those things, those are some of the things that are taking place in Florida. And like I said, a lot of you all may not realize it, but Miami is still a part of Florida. Yes, they are a lot more progressive down there. Yes, we have a lot of diversity down there. Yes, we have a lot of those things that are happening down there. How and so ever, Miami is still in Florida, okay? Now, Nikita, who is known for doing what she likes to call her everlasting pussy stunts, was down in Miami pussy stunting, right? Doing what she does. She walks around half naked somewhere. She takes video footage. People go up for it. I've gone up for it in the past, but I've learned and recognized that she's not somebody that I want to support at all as, as it pertains to the antics and the, and the chicanery and the foolishness and the fuckery, okay? But when it comes down to it, this is what Nikita is known for. She's known for getting up in geesh, putting on the most skimpy outfit she can find made out of rhinestones and feathers or some sort of four-way stretch spandex and walking around halfway naked in the most random of places, okay? So when we look at the idea of what the police report is saying, which is that she was disturbing the peace and that she was putting herself out there nude, right? Which I don't believe. Um, I also don't think that it's too far off. Nikita ain't never got on no clothes. Like, and if we're gonna, if we're gonna have this conversation for real, y'all, let's have this conversation for real and let's have it from a space of understanding who the fuck we know these people to be and not trying to have this martyrdom moment where we're amplifying this person simply because of the issues at hand, right? Nikita is known to be a person that goes out and stokes the fires of society to see how far she can get on any given day and so this is not erratic behavior for her the claims that the police are making are not erratic claims these are not things that we can't see this woman doing this is not behavior that is completely you know different of you know uh this is not behavior that is completely uh different or whatever the case may be this is what old girl does okay she ain't never got on no clothes so when they say that she was naked at the pool, I don't believe that. I believe that Nikita was wearing clothes. I just believe that Nikita didn't have on clothing that was suitable for that establishment and what they deemed to be outfits, right? I believe that Nikita was probably sporting one of her regular 
first of all, if you don't like the way I'm talking about this situation, you don't have to be here. I'm going to say whatever it is that I want to say. I didn't slut shame anybody. At the end of the day, like, I'm going to say what I want to say. Nikita ain't never got on no fucking clothes. Now, if you consider that to be slut shaming, that's you. That's your business. That's between you, your God, and whoever you believe. But me saying she ain't got on no clothes is not me calling her a slut or saying that it's bad. I'm just saying she ain't never got on no clothes. Period. So, when it comes down to it, um... The folks at the hotel are claiming that Nikita was naked, okay? And I don't believe that Nikita was walking around naked as a transgender woman who likely has not had bottom surgery. And I say likely because Nikita has not put us in her business. And if she has, I'm going to say that I believe that it's a lie because I know that Nikita still wears tucking garments. And it's not something that I think, it's something that I know because you can see the tucking garments when she's wearing her clothing, right? While Nikita might dress very riskily and all of that stuff, you can still see that she needs a little bit of extra support and a little bit of extra tug and as a trans girl who used to wear tucking garments I know what the tucking garments look like I know what they give and I also understand the illusion that they're milk uh, that they're meant for and oftentimes Nikita is still wearing tucking garments and so therefore I would believe that because of that Nikita still probably has her bottom parts which is more reason for me to believe that this girl was not walking around somebody's pool ass naked right now Nikita walking around risque Nikita walking around in a thong bikini Nikita walking around in a very small triangle bikini absolutely right but Nikita walking around just naked absolutely not okay I do not think that that's what it was I think that those folks at the hotel are stretching the truth a little bit to make it seem worse than what it was because Nikita did the most when they did approach her right so I believe that they approached Nikita about her skimpy bathing suit which is likely what she had on and Nikita was like fuck y'all because I'm Nikita Dragon do you not know who I am this is what I do right Nikita then goes up to her room and then you know somewhere between this entire exchange the the, the cop were called right when the cops actually get up to Nikita's room there's music playing it's blasting all of the things or whatever the case may be Nikita comes to the door and it is said that the cops were you know like saying like hey they just want you to turn your music down to which Nikita was like oh okay slams the door and then opens it back up and says do you want some more the reason I don't believe that this is just for optics and the reason that I do I do believe that this happened is because we've run into people like this who feel like their privilege and their power extends beyond Instagram and the people that know them yes you have upwards of what like three million followers or something like that nine million followers I don't know but like a mass she has a, a couple million followers but that does not mean that all of those people that are following you one are real and two that those people are a part of the people that you're going to encounter on a daily basis while that does mean that a large part of the you know the the, the human race knows who you are it does not mean that every single person likes that or that they are going to be somebody that follows you for those reasons what I think is going on here is that when they got to Nikita's room Nikita was already on one because she had been asked to do something about her skimpy bikini she was feeling some type of way then she went up to her room to decompress and mind you let me be very clear about this this is all speculation this is all Hope Giselle's opinion this is all based off of what Hope Giselle thinks based off of what Hope Giselle knows about the influencer that is Nikita Dragon this is not me trying to act like I'm an expert this is not me trying to pretend like I was there this is not me acting like I got some inside scoop from a friend that doesn't exist this is simply me saying that after sitting on it for a couple of days and putting together the pieces here's how I feel y'all can take it or leave it you can believe it or not you can come up with your own thesis but this is exactly how I feel about the situation and how I think things went down based off of what I know about this creator okay there we go disclaimer because I have to do that now what I think happened is that when they got to the room, Nikita was already feeling away because she had been addressed about her skimpy bathing suit and that fucked with her spirit, right? And so when they get to the room to come and talk to her about her music, now she's extra pressed because it's just like now with a person who has a personality like that, she felt like it was supposed to be all about her. Y'all already said something about her bathing suit. Now y'all coming up here and bothering her about her music. She's feeling some type of way. She's on her high horse and it's giving very much so leave me alone, right? 
right? Um, but Nikita forgets that the people that she's asking to leave her alone are the Miami-Dade Police Department. So you can't just, mm, no, like you just can't, mm, like that's not how that works, my love. So when the police come and tell you to turn your music down, you turn your fucking music down. That's what you do. You just turn your music down and you go on about your day because it's not that serious to listen to the new Drake album when you could be arrested. But nevertheless, there are also um, factions that say that Nikita might have been intoxicated. I don't doubt that, right? Don't doubt it. I don't doubt that, you know, a very popular influencer was in a very nice hotel on Miami Beach, chilling, drinking, indulging in whatever, you know, drugs that she indulges in or whatever alcohol she indulges in if she takes part in those things. It's not far-fetched to me to believe that she might have had a glass of wine, that she might have engaged in a little marijuana, that she might have had an edible. I don't think that those things are too far off. And so while I'm not going to rule them out, I'm also not going to give her a pass for being either intoxicated or, you know, having a little edible in the system because we all understand that regardless of an edible or not, you would have to be on some serious, serious drugs or have some serious, serious drink in your cup in order for you to not realize that there's an authority figure that can take you to jail standing in front of you asking you to do a thing that is as simple as turning your music down, right? So Nikita did not comply with this and she was arrested. She was subsequently taken to um, the jail, now, here's where things get interesting, okay? Because as a girl who has been to jail, yes, Hope Giselle has been to jail. Oh my God, I've been to jail. Yes, she went to jail, okay? So as a girl who has been to jail, not recently, not recently, not recently. <laughs> um, but as a girl who has been to jail, what I can tell you is that Oftentimes, what ends up happening is that when they re when they recognize that you are transgender, you don't go into gen pop. First and foremost, what ends up happening is that when you get processed and you go into booking as a person who is transgender, they will put you right to a side unit where you're either solitary by yourself. And in some cases where people just don't know no better, they will put you in a space where there are folks who have mental ailments, i.e. people who might be on the spectrum or people who... Um, you know, just uh, uh, exhibit different mental, you know, levels of things. And they put you in there as a way to keep you safe, right? Because they want to make sure that general population does not get a hold of you and cause you harm because they understand that, you know, things can get crazy if you put a trans woman, especially a beautiful or passable or whatever, you know, cis assumed trans woman in a space with a bunch of men, they recognize the harm or just like the disruption that it can cause. And so it's very unlikely that they they understood who Nikita Dragon was, knew exactly her influence on the internet, saw the way that she's been like, you know, bodied all the way out and then put that girl in gin pop with a bunch of dudes who were going to look at that and probably have been locked the fuck up for months and say, oh, this seems like a great idea to do. Like, Because at the end of the day, as screwed up as the police are, y'all, a lot of them are lazy. And especially those like Miami Beach-esque police and all those people, like they are lazy. They don't want to have to do extra paperwork. If I put you in here and something happens, guess what? I got to write this shit up. I got to do all of these other things. I don't want to do that. So you can go over here by yourself in this little room where nobody's going to fuck with you. And that's where we're going to keep you because I don't want to have to deal with the stuff. And just like if most people know who this girl is, right? Especially after the arrest. If most people know who she is, and I'm sure that if she was belligerent, she was telling everyone that, oh, I'm Nikita Dragon. You don't know who I am. Da, 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 da. So even if the cops didn't know who she was, they Googled it and quit quickly found out, which means that they don't want to fuck around and find out because don't let have nobody has time for the fuckery and the foolishness. A lot of people will see the trans community coming and they run from us 10 toes down because they don't want to have to deal with lawyers or being accused of transphobia or whatever the case may be. And I don't think that the Miami Dade Police uh, Department was any different in this particular aspect. I think that whatever they could do to avoid any fucking headlines, they were going to do it and they were going to make sure that they did it because it does not make sense to cause unnecessary attention when I know that this person has millions of followers and we're never going to hear the end of it as a Miami Dade Police Department if we do not treat this girl with the utmost respect, which is another reason for why I believe that when we talk about the idea of Nikita being misgendered on paper, right? 
There are plenty of trans women who are walking around here with surge, with body, with wigs, with faces done, with all of the things and all of the fixings and still have their dead name or what should be their dead name on their documentation. Prime example, we all know and love her, but my auntie T.S. Madison still has not gotten her name and gender marker changed. Now, if that happened overnight, then somebody educate me. But as far as I know, okay, as far as I know, my auntie has just not felt the need to get her name and gender marker changed just because she's been able to maneuver and do all of the great and amazing things that we know T.S. Madison to do without it. And so on a daily basis, whenever she travels and all of those things, y'all know, y'all have seen it in the videos. Madison talks about it openly. When they see Timothy written on her ID, you know, they always gag because if they don't know who she is, then it's giving very much so who is this, right? And those are some of the things that we see happen in the girls. And I don't put it past Nikita to be a girl who feels like she would never be in a position where she would be in trouble enough for it to matter. And so as long as the name changed, the gender marker didn't matter because I don't think that she felt like she would ever be in a situation where people would pay attention to it. Now, if Nikita has gotten her documentation changed, then that's a whole different story for a whole different day and y'all can count it all joy and chalk it to my heart and not my head because I did not know, right? But I feel like in a space where when you look at the police report and how the document was written, not only did they give her the name that was on her, you know, ID, which is Nikita Nguyen, they also went so far as to give her her alias name, which is Nikita Dragon Nguyen, right? And so it's one of those things where it's just like, if they were nice enough to go as far as to like put in like Nikita Dragon Nguyen and all of this stuff, because it's not really an alias, it's just like an Instagram handle. Like, why would they then go above and beyond to misgender you, right? Like, it was just a lot. What I also feel like happened here is that because the documents weren't changed, there was only but so much that they could do. They did what they could. They left what they couldn't. And I think that the, if I'm being honest, I feel like the white trans community is dragging it. Period. Um, and I say the white trans community specifically because I think that when we talk about this, and I'm going to get into this in just a little bit, um, when we talk about these issues and when we talk about these things and how they're happening and how they unfold in community, oftentimes what we really need to understand and what we really need to know is that the black girls are and have been going through this for the longest. So there's a different understand. I'm just saying, but I'm going to get into that in a second. So I don't think that Nikita was necessarily misgendered on purpose. I just think that maybe her um, gender marker has not been changed legally. And also I saw somebody in the comments say that uh, Dragon is legally her middle name. And so if Dragon is legally her middle name, that that means that they respected every other thing on that piece of paper and on that document. And so for me, I feel like if you were going to be disrespectful, like you would have been disrespectful all the way around. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you would have just, you would have just, you would have been disrespectful all the way around I think that you don't stop at one thing or whatever the case may be you just you're just disrespectful all the way around but like I said I could be wrong these people could literally just be you know last name pronounced Nguyen Nguyen I don't know I, I have a bunch of Asian friends and that's always been pronounced Nguyen but um I'll take y'all word for it but all of my Asian friends whose last name is that is always pronounced Nguyen but okay um, but also, stop getting off the topic about stupid stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, when it comes down to it, now we're having this conversation about how Nikita is being held in a male facility. There's a couple of different things at play here, okay? It's pronounced when. Okay, cool, great. It's pronounced when. Yay. Um, I don't care because, I mean, I'm going to just call her Nikita Dragon because that's what I know her as. But I was just trying to give context and y'all really finna work my nerves about the pronunciation of a last name. That doesn't really matter to the story. Anyway, so now that we're talking about where Nikita has been housed, right? Nikita was... Uh, allegedly housed in with men and I say that allegedly because here's the thing the cops are now coming out and making an effective statement that says Nikita was never housed with anybody Nikita went through basic booking processes and then 
She was set aside because of her celebrity status and she was put away from other people because of who she was. And so my thing is, I have a tendency to believe that because like I told y'all, Hope Giselle has been to jail, not recently. And that was exactly what happened to me, right? And when I went to jail, I went to jail in a, uh, it wasn't even in Miami, child. It was in, you know, a, a bullshit rule ass place in Montgomery. You know what I'm saying? And and so, like, they really could give less than a fuck about trans people in fucking Alabama. And so the fact that they did all of that for me and made sure that I kind of had the space to, like, be away from the people until I decided that I wanted to be in gym pop and not held, you know, against my will in this little fucking cold-ass room by myself, um... I could only imagine that in a space where you legitimately have people who are a little bit more forward thinking because it is Miami and while it's Florida, y'all know, like we do have a little bit of a different thought process. I find it very hard to believe that people who are in that space would have just like not thought about the idea that one, she's an influencer with millions of followers, not a hundred thousand, not a couple thousand, but millions of followers, but also um, the fact that this girl is just like, a very vulnerable part of the community. Like we don't want to put a trans woman in here with these, with these other people. And especially one that has all of this body and all of this stuff going on. Like we're just not going to do that. What I want to say is this, what I want to say is this y'all. And what I, what I, what I feel like I have to say is this, and some of y'all ain't going to like me and some of y'all are going to read me for filth and all of the things. And that's okay. And that's all right. That's cool. That's fine. But we have to also consider the source of who we're talking about here in this moment. I do not believe that this was anything short of another stunt that Nikita is pulling. I believe that Nikita knew exactly what the, she was doing. And I believe that Nikita knew exactly what the, she was doing because it's mighty strange that all of this evidence and all of these clips and all of these things are happening in the public eye. When I got arrested, nobody knew that I got arrested except the bail bondsman and the professor that I had to bail me out. Okay? Nobody knew that I got arrested. I would have had to tell people that I got arrested. Nikita could have gotten arrested, bonded out, and nobody would have known that she got arrested unless she wanted you to know that she got arrested. It's mighty strange that this footage from her court case automatically goes to this specific part where she's asking to not be housed with the men anymore and all of this other stuff. Like, y'all don't find that suspicious? Y'all don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? Like, it's very interesting to me that all of this stuff is coming up and that we're getting update by date, plan by plan, like this bitch is Kim Kardashian or somebody. We didn't even have this much information on Paris Hilton when she went to fucking jail and she was Paris Hilton at the height of her career. So how come we're getting all of this information back to 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 back about Miss Dragon in this very performative ass way that is very, very, very on brand for her? None of None of this is off brand none of this surprises me all of this feels very much so like a, a, a scheme and a plan and I can't believe that some of you all are buying into it I can't believe that some of you all are forgetting exactly the character that we're dealing with because we are dealing with somebody that is known for walking around causing a ruckus and using that ruckus to make herself more famous, notable, and gain a little bit more traction than she had the day before. This is not somebody that has been an activist for anybody in the past. And when she has said things, it's been very much so a glaze over topic because she felt like she had to say something because so many people in her comments were getting on her about not saying anything. And so why are we out here really acting as if this is off brand for her? Why are we really out here acting as if this girl is incapable of pulling all of the stunts as it pertains to anything? Nothing is off limits to somebody who lives on a stunt. Literally, she's queen pussy stunt mania and y'all are eating it up and y'all are really activating and activizing yourselves to come to this girl's aid. But I don't even have a problem with that. Y'all know what I got a problem with? I have a problem with the fact that you all 
and some of these activists, these trans white activists and all of that stuff, y'all are popping out of the woodwork. Y'all are making videos. Y'all are doing all of the fucking things. But do you know how many black trans women have been incarcerated for forever about bullshit? Not even some shit that's legitimate. You threw water on a cop. You were playing fucking music. You were walking around lewd at a hotel where there were probably children present and all of this other shit. Like, yeah, you probably deserve to get arrested because you did the fucking most, right? And while you shouldn't be in there locked up for forever for that behavior, people get locked up for less than that on South Beach every single day. You're not special because you're trans and you're not special because you're Nikita, right? And the thing that bothers me is that all of these fucking activists, the white ones, all of these fucking people and all of these motherfuckers in power are all of a sudden so motherfucking jail reform and, 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 and prison reform and what about the trans girls now? But when the black girls was talking about it, when the, when, when, uh, the organization Black and Pink um, was talking about it, when the folks down there in Atlanta and, and Tony Michelle was talking about it, nobody gave a fuck about the fact that trans women were being mistreated in jails. You have a trans woman that was beat so bad by a security guard that her implant popped while inside of her body and nothing was done about it for months. She had been being raped. She had been being beaten up. She had been getting all of this negative treatment. And there was one article written about this woman that I can find to date. And when I look around, it's still that same one article and it is tough as fuck to find but this little girl sets up a stunt and all of a sudden not everybody cares about it now all of a sudden all of y'all are fucking jail reform activists now all of a sudden all of you people that don't never say nothing about nothing are coming out of the woodwork to protect the trans woman in jail when there have been thousands of black transgender women wrongfully incarcerated or incarcerated and then treated like fucking animals while we've been in there and none of you all have batted an eyelash. The girls have gotten out of jail and prison and all of the things and told their full stories and not a single one of you activists that are speaking up for Nikita has made a fucking video the first. But a lot of you all, I'm not surprised because a lot of you all are banking on the fact that when she gets out she's going to see what you've done for her and shout you out and some of y'all will do anything for a fucking retweet or a follow and that shit is very indicative in the way that y'all are moving right now and it bothers me it bothers me that when your black trans sisters need y'all y'all are nowhere to be found it bothers me that when y'all black trans just y'all black transgender sisters need y'all to bring light to something y'all are nowhere to be found it bothers me that when the black trans girls are getting our asses beat when the black trans girls are going to jail for wrong things when the black trans girls need access when the black trans girls need resources y'all are fucking crickets and y'all are quiet and y'all have nothing to say or nothing to add to the topic but one of these white girls does something pulls a stunt breaks a fucking nail and all of you all turn into the most activizing activist that you ever did motherfucking see in your life and it's very indicative in the way that y'all show up and show out for certain people it very much so is and in this particular instance and in this particular instance what's really bothering me about this one is that the same people creating these videos are people that follow me. So where were you all a couple of weeks ago when I reported about the story on Nori, who was formerly named Chad, because I need y'all to remember it, right? Y'all remember the school kid, Chad, that had gotten beaten up for the second time in a row at the same exact school, but this time people came to her home and lured her out of her house and took her to a park under the guise that they were going to go have fun and play, and then they beat her up again on camera, and it went viral again on camera, and we were out here calling the police police and we were doing the thing and my homegirl down in Miami was going and seeing the grandmother and stopping by the school and doing all of that stuff. Y'all remember I was I was reporting on that until she was found to be safe and in a, in a, in a great space with her grandmother. Y'all remember that? Because those trans activists that I see making videos about Nikita didn't make not a single video about her. Y'all didn't make a single video about Nori. Y'all didn't make a video about Chad. Y'all didn't make a video about any one of her identities. None of you. None of you. But that's because Nori can't give you a couple extra hundred thousand followers in the event that you say something about her situation. That's because Nori can't give you clout in the event that you uplift her situation. That's because Nori's grandmother doesn't have a bunch of things to give to you in the event that you uplift that situation. That would be doing the work for free. And a lot of y'all don't want to do the work for free. You just want to look like you're doing something. You don't want to log the man hours. You don't want to put in the hours crying with these people that you don't know. No, 
for the sake of the fact that you share an identity with them and you want to let them know that it gets better. Y'all are not on the phones with these young trans children who are being railroaded in schools and all of that stuff unless they're white. Unless they're white or white passing or Latino, but not the Latino that grew up in the hood, the Latino that's just Latino. Like y'all don't care. And it's very indicative. And that's what's really blowing me and mind boggling me with this situation is that y'all are really out here making bandstand videos for a bitch that is known to be on some fuck shit. But when there are actual people who are in need of your voices, who are in need of your hundred thousand uh, follower platform, who are in need of your million plat million follower platforms, y'all be silent as shit and act like y'all don't see any of the things that is happening. When Laylene Polanco, let's go there. When Laylene Polanco died in Rikers over a $500 bail, where were y'all at with y'all videos then? Some of you all live in New York and y'all didn't even come to the candlelight vigil that we had for her. I didn't live in New York and I got on a fucking train and made sure that I was there because not only was that an issue for Laylene, but it was an issue for the countless numbers of trans women that have been incarcerated in Rikers, which is only built to hold 3,000 people. But on any given Sunday, you could walk in and find 5,000 inmates in there. That's number one. But number two, the sad fact of the matter is that our trans sister was in fucking Rikers and could have been released at any point in time over a $500 bail. And she didn't have it. But you know why that's significant? I'm going to tell you why. Nikita is worth anywhere between three and five million dollars, says the Google. The Google says that Nikita Dragon is worth anywhere between three and five million dollars. Five thousand dollars is a decent night at a strip club for Nikita. Five thousand dollars is two wigs and a session at the esthetician for Nikita. $5,000 is a cute bikini and some shoes to match with the shades for Nikita. You're not going to tell me she ain't have it. Y'all are trying to spin this story like Nikita is just this underprivileged girl who is being railroaded in the system and she just doesn't have it and that they're doing the most and like where is she going to get that and da 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 this that and the third and blah 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 but when you on Instagram showing me how you live the lavish life my love. I don't want to hear about where you're going to get that 5K from when you're worth anywhere between three and five million dollars. I was running an errand today, walked past a Morphe store and saw Nikita's face. Ask the girls that are still going to be locked the fuck up long after Nikita gets out if they have a Morphe store where their face is on display in it. Ask those girls that. Somebody please, somebody please ask me how many incarcerated trans women have a store, a major brand where their face is in the window. Because $5,000 is nothing to someone who is worth anywhere between three and five million dollars and for those of you all who are going to play semantics with me yes i understand that somebody's net worth is not necessarily what they have in their bank account right this is what google has said based off of the things that they've done and all of the things that they're attached to that they own but if you are being net worth at the millions you at least got a couple hundred thousand if not what they say that you have so once again, $5,000 in bail is nothing to someone who is assumably worth three to five million dollars. Stop playing in my face. Nikita could have paid her bail and the bail for six or seven other transgender women that were locked up in there with her. Nikita could have paid her bail and the bail for six or seven other trans women that were locked up in there with her. 
We are not going to act like this girl was just some underprivileged trans person who did not have a lifeline and was thrown away by the society because she's not. And I'm not going to give y'all the opportunity to make it seem that way. She's not Bambi. She very much so stands up very straightly on her own. And we are not going to do this because what it's also giving is colorist. It's giving we don't give a fuck about black trans women unless black trans women are talking about their pain. It's giving we only want trauma porn from y'all and nothing else. It's giving we want the rhythm and not the blues. It's giving we're only going to support it if it don't look like that. It's giving respectability without the respect because Lord knows. It's giving all of the things. It's giving all of the things and the way that y'all are flocking to this situation and trying to make it something that it's not is very disheartening to me. It is very disheartening to me. It is not hard for me to believe that Nikita was never detained with those men in the way that she's trying to make it seem like she is. And unfortunately, unless they release, foot unless they release footage, none of us will ever know. But I'm going to tell y'all that I think in the back of my heart and in the back of my mind, any trans woman that's been to jail recently, because I have it can tell you that it is very unlikely that they just threw this super motherfucking mega influencer into a space where she was going to have reason to create content and talk about them. Find it very hard to believe. Y'all can sit back and talk about this story for however long y'all want to talk about it. And y'all can call me a jealous, ugly bitch who's just hating on her because she's prettier than me or whatever the fuck y'all want to say. But at the end of the day, there are people who deserve the press that she's getting right now 3,000 times more than she does. And y'all are giving it to somebody who don't need no help stirring up drama. She's about to give all types of motherfucking interviews, make all types of fucking content. It's going to give documentary style. Oh my God, woe is me. Let me interview some of the people that I was in jail with the two days that I was there. Like, it's going to give all of the things. And y'all know that. Y'all know that. Y'all know that it's coming. And the crazy part about it is the same people that are making these videos... The same people that are doing all the booty clapping for her are going to be the same people that turn around and read her for filth when she drops that content. So why do it in the first place? Unless they in there whopping Nikita upside her head, I could care less. What did you think was going to happen, my love? You are not special. Being trans does not make us special. We are not special human beings simply because we are trans. We are not asking for, and we should not be asking for, special treatment. We are asking for respect and equality. I am not asking to be waltzed into the jail with a conveyor belt underneath my feet because I am transgender. And I don't think any of us here, rightfully so, are asking for any of those things. We are just asking for fair treatment as human beings and for our humanity to stand before our trans identity. But we are not asking to be treated as these special fucking dolls that can be untouchable and above reproach. And what y'all are doing right now is treating Nikita as if she is above reproach. If she was belligerent at a hotel in an affluent neighborhood in a major city, it is very likely that whether she was trans or not, the same thing would have happened. I don't think that she was purposely misgendered. I'm just not sure if her paperwork reflects that. There's nothing that they can do about it. I don't believe that she was housed in the men's unit. I don't think that she was there long enough for that. I don't think that they wanted that type of smoke. I don't think that they did that. But in the event that they did do that, here's, the, here's, the, here's a little bit of truth bomb for y'all. We live in the world. We live in the world. The world does not normally or usually care for folks like us. 
The world is not normally or usually nice to folks like us. The world is constantly looking for ways to remind us of who we were. So why are y'all acting surprised? That even in the event that they knew who she was and how she identified and how she moves through this world. Why are y'all surprised that they put her in a space where men occupy as people who are constantly telling us that they don't believe that we're women? Why y'all acting surprised? Why are we acting surprised? I'm not surprised that they did that. I'm not surprised that they tried it. Why are y'all acting surprised? That's my question. Why are y'all acting like this is newfound behavior, like it's never been done before, like there are not thousands of other trans women all across these Americas in male fucking situations, even though they present as women? Why are y'all acting like this is some nuanced situation and Nikita is the first bitch to ever get locked up and thrown in with men? She's not. She's not. I'm not giving her the martyr flag that y'all want me to give her. She is not getting Marsha P. Johnson rights as long as I'm alive. I'm going to be on her neck about it if she tries to. Because what she should do is get out and hold her tongue and go back to her regularly scheduled programming. That would be the best thing for her to do. You're not an activist. You're not an advocate. You've never done it. You only speak about it when it suits you or when somebody's threatening to put you on blast about not doing it. So don't get out and pretend all of a sudden like you care about the rights of people that are being locked up because you don't. You care about the fact that they took your wig and probably made you wipe your face off before you took that mug shot. That is what you care about. But you don't care about the disparities of trans women who have been incarcerated. And I need us to have a real conversation. I'm not going to get on here and, and coddle her and pussyfoot for her because she's trans. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And I don't give a fuck whether you're trans. I don't care if you're cis. I don't care if you're gay. I don't give a fuck what your sexual identity is or, or, or any of those prefaces or, or whatever the case may be. When you are wrong, you are wrong. And I can't help but feel like Nikita is wrong. And some of you all are only bandstanding and booty clapping because you want her to see you doing it in hopes that you'll be able to benefit off of her followers and the way that she shows up in social media. So I'm sorry if you're upset that I'm poking holes in your clout chase, but I need us to be real about this. While the system is flawed and fucked up, a lot of trans women have been housed with men, especially those of us who have not or don't have SRS surgery. Beyond that, if your paperwork is not together, they are going to put whatever on your ID at the time of lockup says on that ID. So if your ID still says M, that is what they're going to enter into the system. Beyond that, she got arrested in Florida. Florida does not like the queers. It's literally the home of the don't say gay bill. They don't even want their children learning about us. So what makes you think that they're going to treat us like angels if we should get so locked up and thrown away? This is not a matter of something new happening that's never happened before. This is not a matter of people, you know, utilizing power in a wrong way. This is a matter of someone who is utilizing their privilege as an influencer. To get folks riled up enough to have a conversation in a way that is misleading and honestly disrespectful to the thousands of other people who needed this same energy and never got it. A lot of whom were black trans women. And I want all of you influenced to know that I see you. I see when you stand up. I see when you show up. I see when you paint your face to show up for your sisters. And I see when you don't. I could care less about Paris Hilton and all of her little cisgender friends and all of her little cisgender celebrities. They doing that for PR. 
But some of you girls who I know be out here claiming to do the work and making the content and doing the things, I see you booty clapping. But I saw you ignore my other post about that black trans girl that got beat up. I saw you ignore my other post about that black trans child that needed places to stay. I saw you ignore the post about the GoFundMe for the grandmother that needed a place for her trans child and her to go. I saw you ignore all of those things. But I also saw when you painted that mug to perfection to stand up for Nikita. So when you see me at the events and I'm giving, don't wonder why. And I challenge all the rest of y'all to see people and believe them. Don't sit back and sit on your fingers and your hands wondering if this is just a coincidence because it's not. And nobody else is going to say it. So once again, Hope Giselle is the bad guy. Because at the end of the day, I'm here for it when you write. But when you're wrong, I'm going to hold you accountable. Nikita, you went and you acted a fool. And the consequence to you acting a fool in someone's establishment was that you just so happened to have to go to jail for it. It is unfortunate. It is not okay. I don't wish that on nobody and especially not another trans woman, but it happened. It happens every now and then. None of us are above it. Some of us might not know how to hold our liquor. Some of us might have an emotional night. Some of us just might be upset and want to rebel. And every now and then, one of us might get locked the fuck up for it. It happens. You take your little bail. You show up for your little court date. You pay your little fine or go to your little classes and you move on. Everything is not an opportunity for content. And especially when we're talking about struggles that other people do not get the grace and do not have the access to get the response that you're getting, considering that you literally caused your own chaos, is disgusting. And so if you see this and if, if, if the messy people are going to tag you in this, if you're going to use that platform... Find some girls who already went through it, who are still in legislation, and give them your page for a day. I don't want to see you talking about the reform. I want to see the girls on your page who need the help, who need access to lawyers, who need access to that. Put them on your page for a day. Let those posts live in your feed the way that all their, the other stuff lives in your feed. Let their bodies live in your feed the way that your body lives in your feed. That will say more to me than you could ever say. Because you know very little about what it means to struggle in the way that a lot of those women that have been incarcerated, oftentimes falsely, or oftentimes after being raped by an officer, and then still taken down to the jailhouse for solicitation. You know nothing about that. And this whole stunt and charade is really disrespectful. And I hope that I have to come back and apologize. I hope that I am so wrong. I hope that the receipts prove me all types of wrong. And I have to come back and give you all of your flowers and say, you know what? Next time I'll probably keep my mouth closed all together. But I doubt that I am. And so for all of you all who have been wondering what Hope thinks about it, here it is. I don't feel bad. She's an adult. She did a thing. Those were the consequences for the thing. She left unscathed. Nobody bopped her in her head. Nobody did anything that we know of. Nobody raped her. Like nobody did anything to this girl outside of her getting the consequences for her actions as an adult. She's 26. She's not 16. She did a thing and there were consequences for the things that she did. End of story. Y'all are not going to make me feel bad or like I have to put on my motherfucking cape for somebody who would not put on their cape for me or any of the other girls that have gone through this a thousand and one times over. I'm sure Nikita sees those stories and gets sent those stories and all of that other stuff every other day. And that girl scrolls right on past that, puts on a furry motherfucking pair of pajamas and walks through Hollywood with no problem. Giving no fucks about that article. 
So I just want y'all to, you know, like be very mindful of the people that y'all uplift in situations like this. Because they, be they could very well be the people that embarrass the fuck out of us. And I genuinely feel like Nikita is one of those people that if you put too much faith in her on certain situations, she gonna embarrass the fuck out of us. Period. Those are my two cents. Those are my thoughts about it. And I just hope that y'all receive it in a way that doesn't piss you off too much. Because I'm saying what a lot of people are thinking. And I'm saying it with my full and unadulterated chest. Don't expect me to come to the aid of people who genuinely are not, first of all, are not in any harm. And second of all, to the people that cause their own situations and then cry wolf from the community that they oftentimes look over any other day. Because any other day, Nikita pays the activist girls dust. And now I'm sure she wants to be best friends with everybody. Let that sink in.